The deeper you go, the less you see. In the depths of the unknown, it's gloomy. The water temperatures are freezing cold, and it's pitch dark. Submerged into the abyss, it almost seems as if life itself has extinguished. The pressure down there is so intense that only certain creatures can survive. Creatures of which, if you see with your own eyes, would leave you shocked and in disarray. So what is it about the ocean that leaves so much mystery? How much of the water on this earth has yet to be discovered? Well, according to oceanographers, just 5% of the ocean has actually been explored. Considering how advanced we are in civilization and with all the technology in the world today, this is quite amazing that 95% of the ocean has yet to be discovered. But why have humans explored so little of the ocean? I mean, it should be easy, right? If we can get humans into space, then getting them underwater should be only half as difficult. Well, the answer is actually fairly simple. The ocean is really, really deep and that poses a lot of problems that are difficult to overcome. It's actually easier to go to space than it is to go to the depths of the ocean. Let's dive a little deeper into exactly just how deep the ocean is and what makes it so difficult to explore. Then, let's discuss a bit about what exactly might be lurking down in the watery depths of the ocean, which is most likely unknown to humans, at least for now. On average, the ocean is 12,100 feet, or 3,688 meters deep. That's 2.3 miles, or 3.7 kilometers. To give you a better idea of just how deep that is, you could stack eight Empire State Buildings, one on top of the other, from the floor of the ocean, and they would still not quite break through the surface of the waves. The deepest part of the ocean is called Challenger Deep, in the Mariana Trench, which is located in the Pacific Ocean near the Philippines, Guam, and the Mariana Islands. The Mariana Trench is considered by oceanographers to be the deepest discovered underwater trench in the world. The trench's depth was first measured by the HMS Challenger, a British Royal Navy survey ship that explored the area in 1875. Then, in 1951, another British Royal Navy vessel returned to survey the Mariana Trench. This vessel also happened to be called the HMS Challenger, and it made a big discovery in the area. This time, they discovered what is thought to be the deepest part of the Mariana Trench, and therefore the deepest known part of the ocean, now called the Challenger Deep. The Challenger Deep is 36,201 feet, or 11,035 meters deep, which is nearly 25 Empire State Buildings. Of course, Challenger Deep is the deepest known part of the ocean. It is entirely possible that there are areas that are even deeper that have just not been discovered yet. So how are we able to measure the depth of the ocean if it's so incredibly difficult to get to the bottom of it? The first HMS Challenger, the one from 1875, used what is known as a sounding rope to discover the depth of the Mariana Trench. A sounding rope is a very simple device that can produce surprisingly accurate results. Essentially, it's nothing more than a thin rope with a lead weight on the end. The rope, called a line, is marked at specific intervals with a material like leather or calico to make it easy to tell how far down the line is. Someone called a leadsman reads the markers and calls out the depth. These sounding lines were not just used for scientific purposes, they were also used for navigation, as many maps of the ocean include depth contour lines. While sounding lines were the only option available for measuring the depth of the ocean back when the first HMS Challenger explored the area, by the time the second HMS Challenger arrived at the Mariana Trench, technology advanced quite a bit more. Modern exploration of the ocean's depths involves the use of sonar, specifically an echo sounder device. The way this works is very straightforward. The device transmits an acoustic wave, essentially a sound wave, into the ocean. Oceanographers then take note of how long it takes between transmitting that acoustic wave and receiving a pulse in response. Then, they multiply half the time of sending the acoustic wave and getting a responding pulse with the average speed that sound travels through water. And from that, they can calculate how deep the ocean is. 
Now that we know how oceanographers calculate how deep the ocean is, let's talk about what makes those depths so difficult to explore. First of all, it's important to understand that most of the ocean hasn't been explored, but it has been mapped using sonar. Granted, those maps are not very high quality and only give basic impressions of the geology of the ocean, they're still useful. When we talk about the ocean being explored, we mean oceanographers actually going down into the deep unknown and coming back with usable information such as videos or photographs. The main reason it is so difficult to go to the depths of the ocean is because of the immense pressure created the further down you go. The pressure in the Mariana Trench is 1,000 times greater than it is on the surface. According to Dr. Jean Carl Feldman, who works at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center as an oceanographer, if you went down into the Mariana Trench, the pressure would be like the weight of 50 Boeing 747 aeroplanes pressing on your body. So if places in the ocean like the Mariana Trench are so difficult to explore, nobody must have ever been down there, right? Well, actually, some people have. And it's all thanks to the miracle of modern technology. In 1960, Jacques Picard from Switzerland and Navy Lieutenant Don Walsh from America made history by being the first people to ever descend into the darkness of the Challenger Deep. They travelled in a bathyscaphe, known as a Trieste, which was also designed by Picard, a fitting name for a frontier explorer and his father. A bathyscaphe is a vessel similar to a submarine, but capable of handling much higher pressure and therefore being able to go a lot deeper into the ocean. Picard and Welsh spent two hours descending into the Challenger Deep, but were only able to stay down there for 20 minutes because of a crack that formed on the window of the bathyscaphe caused by the temperature difference at the depths they descended to. Unfortunately, they were also not able to take any pictures because it was too dark and cloudy down there. Since that first monumental dive, others have followed in the path that Picard and Welsh blazed. James Cameron, who was famously interested in deep sea exploration, travelled down into the Challenger Deep in 2012. Although he was in a much more sophisticated craft than the one that Picard and Welsh used, Cameron's craft, called the Deep Sea Challenger, was piloted solely by Cameron himself. He was able to stay down in the Challenger Deep for three hours, taking lots of photos and video footage of his time down there. Since then, there have been several other piloted expeditions into the Challenger Deep, most occurring in 2020 and 2021. Each trip helps researchers to find out about what exactly is living down there at the bottom of the ocean, and the results are often quite surprising. The creatures that live down there need to be able to survive in environments of immense pressure with no natural light. While there is no marine life humans are familiar with down in the Challenger Deep, there is still quite a lot of activity. Three organisms make up the majority of life in the Mariana Trench. Xenophyophries, amphipods and holothurians. All three of these sound a lot like the kind of species that you would expect from a science fiction movie but they're actually pretty recognisable creatures. Holothurians are essentially translucent sea cucumbers. Xenophyophries are like amoebas. Amphipods look a lot like shrimp. There is not a big range of food for these creatures to eat, but they get by on chemicals in the water, or just like creatures at the surface do, by eating each other through the hierarchy of the food chain. There are also hundreds of microorganisms living in the mud and microbial mats in the Mariana Trench. These live off a steady diet of hydrogen and methane, both abundant at these depths. And finally, yes, there are fish living down there too, although they are pretty odd looking. The Mariana snailfish is pink and translucent and is without scales. It is one of the top predators of its dark, watery home feasting mostly on anything that crosses its path. It's amazing to think even in the complete darkness of the deep ocean, with pressure more than a thousand times stronger than on the surface, that creatures are still able to survive down there. Many of them are still a mystery to us, but the more voyages that oceanographers take down into the Mariana Trench, the more likely we are to find out the mysterious and fascinating creatures that make it their home.
And thankfully, ocean exploration has become more of a focus in recent years. The General Bathymetric Chart of Oceans GEBCO, whose primary focus is providing detailed data about the ocean's depths, have proudly proclaimed that they aim to have 100% of the ocean floor mapped by the year 2030 in a project called Seabed 2030. This is very exciting news, because as sociologist Amati Edzoni so accurately said, the study of the ocean is a potential source of discoveries that could prove helpful for addressing a wide range of national concerns, from climate change to disease. And who knows? Maybe by 2030, oceanographers will have discovered a place in the ocean that is even deeper than the Challenger Deep. And it's anybody's guess what sort of strange creatures could be lurking down there. We hope you enjoyed this video. And please do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. For more interesting videos like this, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, turn on notifications, and most importantly, share. Until then, we will see you soon in our next video.